Good day, students. I am teacher Susan Elaine Muñez Hermosilia from Compostela National High School, Compostela East District. Welcome back to another Grade 9 Science Field Learning here in TV Escuela. For today's lesson, we are going to relate colors of light emitted by metals to the structure of the atom, Infer that electrons can stay only in a definite energy level. Identify the energy levels, sublevels, and atomic orbitals in an atom. And determine the maximum number of electrons that can stay in an energy level. One of the things that we have seen last new year are the fireworks. But how does they have different beautiful colors? This is due to the arrangement of electrons in an atom. Firework effects are produced by the combustion of explosive materials called metal salts. When heated, metal salts emit color of light. These are the elements giving colors in metal salts. Sodium gives yellow color, barium gives green color, calcium produces orange color, copper gives blue, and lithium gives red. With the use of spectroscope, one can detect a series of narrow lines or line spectrum on the light given off by an element. The spectral lines suggest different energy levels in an atom. Neil Boyer's hydrogen model of an atom stated that potential energy level of electron in hydrogen atom is quantized. This means that electron can only occupy certain energy level in a fixed distance from the nucleus. Bohr stated that electrons are moving around the nucleus in circular path or orbit at a definite distance from the nucleus. This is similar to the planets revolving around the sun. Electrons in each orbit have definite energy. This energy increases as the distance of the orbit from the nucleus increases. These orbits are also known as shells or energy levels and are assigned each a number. It can be n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, etc. Or letters such as k, l, m, and o, etc. As long as electron stays in a given orbit, there is no absorption or emission of energy. If the electron receives extra energy, it can jump into a higher energy level. This is also called the excited state. The electron in the excited state can return to its original lower energy level or the ground state by releasing discrete amount of energy in the form of light. This explains the spectral lines. At first, Bohr's model appeared very promising as it fits the hydrogen atom very well. However, when this model was applied to atoms other than hydrogen, it did not work. In 1920s, Louis-Victor de Broglie from France and Erwin Schrödinger from Austria suggested that because light seems to have both wave and particle characteristics, it behaves simultaneously as a wave and as a stream of particle. The electron might also exhibit both these characteristics. In the Bohr's model, 
the electron was assumed to move in a circular orbit. The wave mechanical model, on the other hand, introduced a mathematical description of electrons' motion called a wave function or atomic orbital. According to this model, orbitals are nothing like orbits. Squaring the orbital gives the volume of space in which the probability of finding the electron is high. Schrodinger used mathematical equations to describe the possibility of finding an electron in a certain location. This model is known as the quantum mechanical model of an atom. This model requires the use of quantum numbers which are the following. First, the principal quantum number or n that tells the energy level. The possible values of n are positive integers from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The smaller the value of n, the lower the energy, and the closer to the orbital is to the nucleus. Second, the momentum quantum number, or L, which describes the orbital type. Its value is related to the principal quantum number and has allowed the value of 0 to n minus 1. For example, if n is equal to 4, the possible values of 1 would be 0, 1, 2, and 3, since 3 is n minus 1. Let us remember that if L is equal to 0, the orbital is called an S orbital and has spherical shape with the nucleus at the center of the sphere. The greater the value of n, the larger is the sphere. If L is equal to 1, then the orbital is called a P orbital with two lobes of high electron density on either side of the nucleus for an hourglass or a dumbbell shape. If L is equal to 2, then the orbital is a D orbital with a variety of shapes. If L is equal to 3, then the orbital is an F orbital with more complex shapes. Third, the magnetic quantum number or M sub L that tells which specific orbital. The possible values of M sub L depend upon the value of L quantum number. The allowed values for M sub L are negative 1, 0 to positive 1. This is why, for example, if L is equal to 1 or the P orbital, the corresponding M sub L values will be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Therefore, giving us the P orbital 3 sub levels. And the last one, the spin quantum number or M sub S which tells the spin. There are only two possible values for M sub S. That is, positive one-half and negative one-half. When two electrons are to occupy the same orbital, then one must have an M sub S equals to positive one-half and the other electron must have an M sub S equals to negative one half. These are spin paired electrons. So, when we say N is equal to one, then L is equal to zero. M sub L is also equal to zero, which describes the one S orbital that can accommodate two electrons. 
which is a positive half and a negative half. 1s orbital is the lowest orbital that should be filled out first by an atom. Therefore, in the first energy level K, the number and kind of sublevel is 1s with one atomic orbital. The kind of atomic orbital s with one value that can hold a maximum of two electrons. In energy level 2 or L, the sublevel is 2 which are s and p with s having one value and p with three values with a total of four atomic orbitals that can hold up to eight electrons. In energy level 3 or M, the sub-level is 3 which are S, P, and D with S having one value, P with three value, and D with five value with a total of nine atomic orbital that can hold up to 18 electrons. In energy level 4 or N, the sub-level is 4 which are S, P, D, and F with S having 1 value, P with 3 value, D with 5 value, and F with 7 values with a total of 16 atomic orbital that can accommodate 32 electrons. Now, let us have a visual representation of the chlorine atom, which has 17 electrons. Can you remember how many maximum numbers of electrons can a shell hold? Okay, let us start with the K-shell. How many electrons can K-shell hold? Correct! It can hold two electrons. These are for the S sublevel. How about the L shell? How many electrons can it hold? Correct! It can hold eight electrons, six for P, and two for S. Now, we are left with 7 electrons for the M shell. Remember that the lowest orbital should be filled out first so we can have 2 electrons for S and 5 electrons for P. I know that this lesson may be tricky for some, but according to Arnold H. Glossow, the key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing it. Feel free to watch the video again in case you feel the transition of the lesson is fast. If there are things you would like to clarify, feel free to contact your subject teachers. My dear learners, keep safe and remember, Dito! Sa TV Escuela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama. Bye-bye!